really big part of the matchup. He had the man himself. Yeah, good, good job. Uh, I mean, good stuff to both of them. They, they both played really well. Uh, Daki won a few more exchanges. Is this, is this another Peach Puff? Uh, yes, it is. We are blessed. We are blessed on this blessed day. Are there any nearby, nearby coffee shops? Uh, yeah, there's a. If you're looking for like Starbucks, is that? But like, there's Five Stones. Five Stones is the main one I would think of. It's like an avocado toast coffee shop that's uh, near the Red Transit Center. Uh, yeah, Five Stones. Uh, we'll zoom in. Yeah, there's that Five Stones, and then there's also that Soul Food place. They do like really good coffee and tea drinks. Uh, closes. I'm looking for a place that closes at like. Eight. Uh, coffee shops generally don't close at eight around here, unfortunately. Uh, I mean, you'll probably have to go to Seattle for that. What uh, region are you? What's up? What region are you? Uh, I'm from Bremerton. I took a ferry over here. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Dang. So, it's, so uh, the, <laughs> I'm in the that's Navy, it. and the base is I'm not the, the base that people are used to seeing. That's an Air Force base in Tacoma. My base is in Bremerton, and it's a shipyard. And that's where submarines Ooh. and stuff get repaired. That's cool, dude. So awesome. yeah, it's, it's a bit of a hike to get the tournaments, yeah, but yeah, I think okay. it's worth it. Yeah, if you want coffee, the close after eight. I mean, the Starbucks. Uh, uh, to the girl, I can't just ask her to go to Starbucks. I gotta, I gotta show her some place oh, that's white and granola. Oh, I see. I see. Some place where sad white people play guitar. You're trying to impress someone. Yeah. At eight o'clock with coffee. Yes. That sounds difficult. Well. I don't know, it's Tinder. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, uh, I don't know any, like, nice coffee shops I've been played. Like, Soul no, food no, no hate on Starbucks. Yeah, Soul Food's really good. Alright, I'll, I'll just tell you Soul Food. When, when does it close? 10. Oh, okay. Right? Oh, I didn't know that. I yeah. just kind of assumed it closed early, because everything closed early. Wait, it closed at 10? Most restaurants in Redmond close at 9. Crazy. Dude, Redmond is Deadman, man. Redmond is great. Like, it's a nice place. But there's like so little happening, especially late. Well, bangers and smash might be uh, prominent enough to where they can list it in the, the town hall meetings. Nice. Yeah, right. If you're red, it's that small. Yeah, Redmond is. I, would, I don't know what's small, but it's uneventful. Uh, but yeah, if Sofa's, if Sofa's open till 10, definitely go there. Uh, I will say the one thing is that they have a big. Uh, how do I say this? Neo. Spiritual aesthetic. Yes. All right, uh, all right. Like they're into stuff like you know astrology and crystals and things like that. Um, but like the coffee is good, the tea is good. I'll have to check it out. Yeah, the fake goods are good. Would this be an upset? Vincent has been on the come up. Is it an upset? Um, yes, it would be a small upset of Vincent. No, it would probably be a significant upset of Vincent one, um, especially given the matchup. But it's only one stock. We're just one stock in. Right. Chango has plenty of time to adapt. I know Chango doesn't think this matchup is that bad. Uh, is it Chango or Chango? It's I Chango. Guess. Okay. Um, everyone calls him Chango, uh, but it's Chango. Well, they had to learn his name quick after the upset scene. <laughs> so I can understand. Oh, nice, nice string by Vincent, catching Puff coming down. He's racked up. This is so much extra credit. Like, this is a ton of extra credit. This is the, uh, he annotated the pages and everything. All that extra credit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, like, Chango will need, like, a good five, five, six straight hits to, like, make up that deficit. Really good play by Vincent. So what's Vincent doing here? Vincent's playing this surprisingly aggressive. Yeah. Um, and Chango's playing surprisingly bare life. Okay, there's, there's the bears. There's the bears. Only when he's cornered, though. I'm, I'm surprised he has, hasn't gone with the offensive, just slowly drifting left school, you know? Vincent just got a F smash on this man while he's in the corner. That's... Yeah, he's really good at keeping Chango in the corner. Okay, good. Chango finally jumps out of there. Um, I, got, I guess it can be, be kind of hard for both characters to escape the corner in this matchup. Because uh, it kind of takes a while to jump over your opponent. And Puff has a very disjointed up air, and while Peach has just like a very, she can do like a pretty fast, you know, full hop into there or something, full hop into up air, etc. Okay, gets in there with a the nair into down tilt. I thought I would see more vegetable throwing earlier, but 
Warrior comes. Yeah, no, Vincent is, uh, is pretty aggressive. I think I think all the peaches in Washington are pretty aggressive, actually. Uh, it's a pretty aggressive character in general. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's refreshing to see because I feel like the general, like, when somebody's getting good at Peach, the only thing you ever hear is, oh, just, just do what Armada does. <laughs> just win. Yeah. <laughs> Very unhelpful advice. Ah, uh, the frying pan. Like, a lot of what Armada does is not just good Peach stuff, it's good melee stuff. Well, yeah, I mean, otherwise you wouldn't have success with Fox. Absolutely. We're seeing a lot of Peach's big tech. Look at this, look at these Z-drops. So I feel like one thing Vincent's good at, so one of Puff's big weaknesses is that while she has a lot of horizontal range, she kind of has to commit in terms of where she's placing her hitbox in the first place. Okay. And one of Peach's strengths is that she has a lot of control over where she places her hurt boxes vertically. So if you can find a weakness in how the Puff places uh, her back ears, then you can float at heights that make it difficult for him to execute back ears that are actually properly spaced. So you're thinking like if they have a common pattern of like they'll do two bears, like one at this height, one at this height, exactly. and then drift back this way, or you know. Exactly. I'll uh, have to think about that because I keep losing the puffs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, Thank you. I think this people fall into a lot of patterns in terms of how they time and space things. So, and part of that is like not being conscious about the execution. Uh, if you really autopilot, like if you autopilot the whole sequence of oh do a short hop bear, then like often you just end up in this pattern where you do short hop, you immediately do bear, or you do it like some number of frames after your short hop. But instead of having so the versatility to do oh let's delay a sh let's do a short hop into a slightly delayed back air or let's fast fall at this point in time or let's not fast fall do the latest possible back air etc or let's do an empty off wave win. That's, all these that's what makes it a great pair, right? And if you can find patterns in how your opponent likes to execute his bears, then you can float at heights that are disruptive to that. So we've seen a few, the reason I'm bringing this up is that we've seen a few times where uh, Vincent floats at a height where you see Chango go for a back air and whiff it, and then Vincent is able to punish with either a falling aerial or a fair. And it's worked out for him a few times now. Um, okay, Good call nice out. Fair, yeah. He did that same uh, jump to sort of cover a nair, and Vincent was already there, like you said. Placing his vertical in the building. Yeah, that was really good by him. Uh, he just had, yeah, he did almost had quite a few callouts this game. I'd say I wouldn't say he's like one character's player's more read based than the other, but I'm seeing uh, Vincent go for a lot of just like preemptive aerials to sort of cover where he thinks he's going to get attacked. Mm -hmm. Whereas I feel like Bladewise was playing the match a bit more traditionally. Like I don't think we've seen a single up smash come from Vincent. Oh, okay. I meant Bladewise. Bladewise was up smashing out of shield, doing these uh, preemptive short hop up airs. And we've seen, I think that was like the third time that Sesson just threw out a fair. Just like, mm -hmm. run into it. And there's another one. That wasn't, that was a good one. That's different. That's nice falling back here. Okay, so that was things that really close. We're down to a minute and a half left on the clock. It's very possible this goes to time. Uh, Knowing Chango. Uh, Chango only stalls if he, like, thinks it'll actually help him, right? Like, he, he won't do it in a lot of matchups unless it's, like, you know, down to the wire. Uh, I wouldn't say either of them playing particularly campy either. They're just picking their spots really well. Yeah, it's just the matchup. Um, Chango thinks, in, so I've been talking to Chango about this whole, you know, rule about should Puff lose timeouts. And Puff, or uh, Chango cites this matchup as one of the reasons why Puff should not lose timeouts. Because he thinks other floaties will be able to just play very, very campy against the Puff. Uh, like, usually I think you hear arguments in terms of Fox and Falcon, but Chango brings up an interesting point in terms of how it affects Puff versus Peach and Puff versus Samus. Uh, all right, well, I think this is the match where you're going to see the timeouts the most as well. Dude, over the last 30 seconds, Vincent just saw the entire game slip away from him. Yeah, um... It's <laughs> After seven minutes of really hard work, that's... This, I feel really bad, actually. That's just a tragedy. Now that now, now he doesn't even have to play the game. Yeah, I mean, like, you're not making this back in 30 seconds, I think. No, yeah, Especially 70%. Like, part of why Chango's is able to win neutral so much now is that he knows Vincent's desperate. The only way this is happening is if... Vincent pulls a blade wise and gets two meaty down smashes on a platform in a row. Alright, so Vincent needs to not let this get to his head. Um, like, he knows he played really well this game, he just needs to continue that into the next game. Like, Vincent also has a good Falcon. Uh, oh, that's interesting. I don't know if I've ever seen him go Falcon in a tournament. Um, just, just throwing out suggestions, because if I was Vincent, I mean, I don't play Peach, so I'm not used to it. But just to. That 
was all in the last 30 seconds, dog. Yeah, that no. has to be demoralizing. Like, Vincent was winning up until basically one minute left on the clock. He just ate a lot of bears. He ate a ton of random stray hits. I mean, they weren't even stray. They, like, kind of strung into each other. Chango's absolutely robbed him. But, you know, Chango will take Oh, look at the smile on Chango's face. <laughs> he robbed Vincent. Um, but really good on him to, like, clutch it back at the end. Like, honestly... I think one of the big things that separates good players from bad players is not how they do in the first 90% of the match, but how they do in the last 10% of the match. Right. I think there are lots of players that play phenomenally well the first 90% of the match. As soon as you realize you have a lead, it's over. Yeah. You need to play like you don't have a brain. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like a, if a tiger... Tiger, tiger isn't thinking about how he should take down a deer. It's just what a tiger does. Yeah. Same, same thought when it comes to melee. You shouldn't... You shouldn't be like thinking like, oh, I'm gonna lose, oh, I'm gonna win. You shouldn't be thinking anything at all. As soon as you think you lose, Chango, where are you going, bro? Uh, what well, can, what can Vincent really yeah, do? Yeah, doesn't have a spike. <laughs> Too bad. Um, I think his best option was legitimately hoping for a stitch. Yeah, like you're taking that time to pluck for bombs or stitches would have been nice. All right, it looks like Chango's kind of found his footing, getting a big lead this this first stock. This this feels like the match is going much faster right now. Fountain probably has is partially uh, the reason for it. Um, yeah, I'd say so. I mean, they weren't really getting their kills uh, vertically anyway. This, So uh, I don't think the stage difference is going to matter that much. I think in my my brain is telling me most Peaches counterpick to this because they want the down smash on the platform. Yeah, I mean, that's probably part of it. So I was saying, like, the back, back when I used to play Peach in this matchup, uh, well, I, you I did that to yourself. I okay, that's a bad way of thinking. Back, back when I was considering playing Peach in this matchup, I definitely enjoyed this stage the best. What character were you currently playing in the matchup? Uh, Mark. I'm a Mark fan. All right, fair enough. Um, I I wasn't doing it because I thought Peach was better in the matchup. I just like had a Peach and in practice she seemed to be doing better. Fair enough for me. Um, just because like of the different skills the two characters uh, emphasize, I guess. But I definitely like the stage the best in the matchup. I really like the the small horizontal space. I feel like it. Puffs like to run away a lot more on bigger stages. Yeah, what Peach, what Peach doesn't have in range, she certainly has in like what she can do in that small amount. Yeah. Generally, I feel like uh, Dreamland versus Fox and all that is the exception, but I feel like the smaller amount of space you give her, the more she's gonna thrive, just because she can throw out stuff so fast. Mm -hmm. I can understand why uh, you had uh, success with Peach in a matchup that's traditionally worse. It's just like the certain strengths you have as a player may apply differently to certain characters. You know? Yeah, it's like it's like what I was saying about um, the low volatility of Floodia does. Right. I think it just like kind of changes what things can make you effective in a matchup and what things make you less effective. Right. Okay, I don't want to sound crazy, but Peach's back throw has like the most impactful sound of anything in the game, and she did like two percent. There. <laughs> that's <laughs> so loud. That's how the booty hits, dog. It's, it's that booty just looking thick. Thick AF. Three Qs. <laughs> Speaking of thick, Chango's got a thick lead in this match. <laughs> because it's 46% on FOD versus Peach. <laughs> that lead is thick, bro. Dude, it's kind of quirky. <laughs> a little random. <laughs> it's thick and it's just getting thicker. Oh, Vince is trying to even out the thickness here. Probably the most satisfying sound, just hearing the puff. The hollowness of the racket. Yeah, I, I, I really do like that sound. <laughs> the sound design in Melee is just really good. Oh my god, uh, that killed! I know we talk about it all the time. And yeah, that's a, that smash is crazy powerful. Just a really, really crappy hitbox. Well, I mean, I was I was talking all that good, all that good-ish about how this stage has such a high ceiling. Puff died at like 70. There you go. Yeah, and this is with the second highest ceiling in the game. So. The contestant, suddenly, he's just like a couple turn of throws away from having his back. Oh, We've been talking about how thick the lead was, and then it left. Yeah, the thickness has dissipated. <laughs> no thickness here, fellas. Look at a little bit more... <laughs> I'm not going to say that. It's looking, looking like a Taylor Swift lead. <laughs> wow. I was, not thick at all. I wasn't going to go there. I was going to... Shit talk Taylor Swift. Um, all right, and she, has, she has enough money. All right. <laughs> she has enough money that she has enough advantages. She gets to eat an L every once in a while. She has a wall of W's. There could be uh, one L. So Vincent's up. 
And yeah. unlike, instead of being one minute down on the timer, it's three minutes down on the timer. So I generally just feel like um, the two have been throwing out more moves. The last match, they were more careful, more dash dancing on the platforms, more call outs. This one, they're just sort of going at it. They're mash. They're mash. I think part of it is the size of the stage. Like, they're. The, 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 the small stage just like gives you what I want to say. It's, it sort of imposes more pressure on you to place that place more hitboxes. Yeah, I mean, I assume Shango banned Yoshi's. Yeah, I would assume that too. Does Peach want to go to Pokemon in this matchup? Uh, mm, I don't know. I I would say no. All Especially right. not on Fro Frozen Stadium. One rest will change this. It's true. I mean, Shango hasn't gone for anything resembling a rest in the past 12 minutes. That's, this is also true. So I, I guess it just sort of slipped my mind, but I mean, Chango really just is not a very rust heavy puff. Like, compared to like Misu, for example, he's yeah. much more about winning neutral law with back airs. Than... Oh, okay. I think we're going to game three. Is this the last round before top eight? Right. I think it is. Okay, this is big. That large argument we had about what, what, what winner's this. quarters <laughs> is. Yeah, and this is a winner set? Okay, we're going to stadium, and Chango brought him here. So, if that answers your question about which character probably does better on the stage. But yeah, I think Puff benefits a lot from the horizontal space here. I mean, that's... Vincent got one kill. One kill. With an up move. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this is this is a pretty good counter pick. I think against Bladewise it would be different. Bladewise is going for up airs and up smashes. Stitch! Oh, didn't pin anyone. He Z-dropped the Stitch. <laughs> he thought too much about what could happen. He didn't look at what he had. But it, I don't know. I, I, just, I just always think that's funny. Whenever I talk to a, a Peach main, they're always like, I don't know when I have to Stitch. <laughs> so, like, I mean, you're seeing it right there. Oh, it's a perfectly... Okay, it's super even right now. Are we the controller dick here? Um... I mean, if we just start seeing a whole bunch, I'm, I'm willing to uh, charge a fee for it. What if they Five dollars to make sure nobody touches your controller. What if they start throwing tantrums and like beating up the other controllers? When we have a good old-fashioned controller throwing contest. Smash Camp Part 2. Only this time I don't think Milo's going to throw his box. <laughs> yeah, that's the other thing about the stage. If you're on the wrong end of the stage, effectively the horizontal blast zone is super, super far away. Not just that, but it's just like, you get positional advantage, and this stage is just long. It's hard to get to the other side. Yeah, no, it really is. Like, being cornered does not matter as much on the stage, because you're just not in the corner as much. There's a much bigger corner. Yeah. Like, you might even say the corner is thick. Thick? <laughs> thick? <laughs> thick corners, dude. Pokemon Stadium is thick-ass corners. The Tessin has, uh done the exact opposite of what we said would happen and not crumbled after that dumb eight minute timeout. Yeah. He's no. actually playing better. Yeah, no, Vincent's mentality is really good. Vincent has like one of the best mentalities I've seen in the Washington scene. It's all that it's all that ultimate dude. He's, he's accustomed to it. He played ultimate four brawl. I think he's I think he's used to a good old fashioned timeout. It's probably a pastime for him. <laughs> ultimate does not have timeouts very often man. Uh, yeah I saw that. Honestly, That's an old joke to make because I, they happen way more in four and brawl. Yeah. Ultimate, I'd say, is actually a pretty, pretty fun, aggressive game I at times. I feel like melee probably has more time as an ultimate. That's a fair statement. I don't like that. It is. I don't like that. Like I think there's less tempo variation in ultimate than in melee. Like, like the 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 fastest games in melee are definitely faster than the fastest games in ultimate. But I feel like their average speeds are well, depending on what you, what you count as speed. Right. Well, but it also depends on matchup. Uh, right. When I say average, I'm not like thinking like you know I, maybe the slowest matchups are like Puff Peach and the fastest are Fox to this, and then you got like Mark Sheep sort of in the middle. I think the longest match you'll get in Ultimate is when there's like projectile heavy characters. We just don't have those in melee. We do have this. But the, even the projectile heavy characters, um, like projectiles aren't nearly as strong as people think in Ultimate. There's you can like really rush down a lot of. Uh, projectile characters, and even in dittos, like, they'll find ways to give each other. A lot of the heavy projectile characters have bad recoveries. Did you see that right there? That was the first platform movement we've seen from either player in 20 <laughs> minutes. That Waveland was spicy. That was a spicy Waveland, dude. I love Wavelands. Yeah, I like them. They, they zip around. Game so much. I, I, I almost might even consider playing Luigi. I like him so much. 
I feel like Wayland's like making both these characters like super cool. Right? Uh, it gives them just very interesting mix-ups out of their normal sort of aerial mix-up games. I've seen Shango throw out a lot more tomahawks than before. I think he's uh, trying to call out spots where uh, contestants just waiting. He's what like, is Chango doing? That Chang was terrifying. That was like a triple bait. Yeah, and he was staying outside of the grab range, and I was so scared that Peach was just gonna like jump forward and fair or something. I, I mean, that's the that's the idea, right? They grab, then you just jump forward and rest. Yeah. Or maybe forward. Smash. Actually, no. This is forward smash kill. Yeah, that would have just forward smash at that point. Or even, I don't know if dash attack would kill this percent. Dash attack is like ridiculously strong though. Oh, nice up air. Goes through the turnip. We've always for, we've been t commentating a lot from Vincent's side. We forget that Shango has also been accompanying each match and has kept his mindset rock solid too. The momentum has been shifting back and forth. I'd say these two are pretty evenly matched. Yeah, that's true. I think it's very easy to talk about this matchup from the Peach's side because you almost see the Peach of the underdog no matter who the two players are. Right. It's like uh, it's like when you watch a low tier hero play against like the moon, let's say, and you're gonna yeah. focus the entire time about how good Ringler is. Exactly. I'm not calling anybody out in particular. <laughs> Sorry, I <laughs> like I'm a degenerate low tier hater. <laughs> Dude, I, I understand entirely. I don't like low tiers either. Low tiers, they exist to keep other people from winning tournaments. Well, <laughs> I personally think that like hard, my hate for low tiers doesn't come from the characters themselves. It comes from the mains. Really? My, the, my theory is that low tier mains don't actually enjoy melee. They enjoy the feeling of watching someone lose in an embarrassing way. <laughs> they aren't thinking, I'm closer to getting first. They are thinking, oh, wow, local Larry the Fox main doesn't know how to you know, DI jab down smash. <laughs> Get wrecked, nerd. And all these people are gonna scream in the background. I'm Dude, sorry. I, I empathize. I empathize. With I've been Larry. I bet you've been Larry too. I think we've all been Larry at one point. Yeah. No, Sometimes you, you lose a game to Chef Tony's DK. I get low low tier cheese super hard. I don't know. Part of it is just the respect. Yeah. No, I. Uh, you know, matchups are a part of the game, right? And like, it's okay to exploit someone's lack of matchup knowledge. I mean, honestly, like even in. Even in these kinds of matchups, like like top tier matchups, a big part of the game is finding situations where your opponent doesn't hasn't really mapped out what to do, at least not on an instinctual level. You know? Like we all like to complain about matchup inexperience, but I feel Thank like God, somebody died. I feel like the the gradient between top players and high level players they're based on sort of, you know, just finer shades of the matchup and of, of what matchup experience is, right? Like, you need to understand these matchups at a deeper level the higher up you go, and you get, if you have holes in your knowledge, they get exploited even in these top tier matchups that you play over and over again. That's a... I don't know, the more I uh, learn about this game, the more I, I see that happen. People taking notes on certain things that they discover, labbing it out. Uncle Punch has been such a huge factor. Oh, Uncle Punch saved melee, dude. Dude, who's gonna take this? Wait, 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 we have one minute left. One minute. We have one minute left. Th this is, this is danger percent. of a second timeout. And like, there's no... Yeah. Either person I, could just I hope, lose it. I hope Vincent goes for timeout, dude. No. No, oh, no, 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 no. Not again. Not another wall of bears oh to my ruin. God. <laughs> I don't mean to say that Chango <laughs> getting getting a bear is ruining the match, but oh I mean last God. time. Two percent discrepancy, forty seconds to go. All right. This is this is really tense. Oh no, Vincent played aggressive and got punished. No, 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 no. no, no. He's just cornered. Jungle's like really playing around turnips super hard right now. Okay, gets okay. Him. This gets is one. In. This is one more like turn. He needs two turnips to. No, oh, no. Now All right, this is a down smash. Jango's doing such a good job oh, of staying no, above Veach. Like, he hasn't stayed above Veach this well the entire no. match, and just now he's deciding to do it. Like, no matter who takes this, is a crazy set. Eight, but this seven, is six, over. Five. Vincent saying, fuck it, and runs. GG's. Oh my god. Two timeouts. Really good set by both these players. Um, dude, winning timeouts is hard. Like, people like to hate on timeouts, people like to hate on campy play or whatever, slow play, but getting down to that situation is really hard. Winning in that situation is really hard. Playing the clock is not easy. People like to act like they can just play arbitrarily lamer or something and, like, do better. But that's not how it works at all. Uh, any notion of playing lame that actually works is very difficult to pull off in this game. Oftentimes, people who 